Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. Today's episode is really cool. You want to listen through all the way to the end because you're going to learn a few things that you probably aren't expecting from this episode. One of them is you're going to learn about your life's true purpose and what that actually means. And you're going to hear about someone who's had a pretty interesting path to get there. You're going to learn about the factors that go into what goes on your plate that have nothing to do with nutrition, that have more to do with what actually fuels you or nourishes you. And we're going to go in some like emotional sides of what is involved with the decisions you make. And we're going to learn about this concept of transformational nutrition. So throughout this episode, there's all kinds of good stuff. And I think it's really interesting and engaging. I had a fantastic time in this interview. So tune in, listen to the whole thing, and you're going to like it. This episode of Bulletproof Radio is brought to you by Squatty Potty, who brilliantly has us all talking about pooping. Everybody poops, and their mission is to help you poop better one stool at a time. Humans were designed to squat when pooping, and two-thirds of the world still does. The Squatty Potty stool puts you in a natural squatting position for faster, better, and more complete elimination. Your colon's sweet spot comes with the squat. (laughs) This is the only position in which the puborectalis muscle fully relaxes. Uh, That's the muscle that keeps your poop inside until it's go time. When the colon straightens out, it allows for complete elimination without straining. Squatty Potty is not meant only for people with gut or colon issues. The Squatty Potty stool is the best addition to your bathroom routine to help you prevent issues and maintain good health. Get that toxic crap out completely and you'll avoid some of the problems down the road. I love my Squatty Potty and I use it daily, sometimes more than once. In fact, (laughs) now they have a travel portable version to aid with the miseries that come with travel constipation. Guys, I'm not kidding. I actually do have a Squatty Potty, and I really like it. It sounds a little bit crazy, but it's totally legit. So get your butt over there and receive a 20% discount by going over to SquattyPotty.com slash Bulletproof. Get your discount of 20% off by SquattyPotty.com slash Bulletproof. I'm serious. It's actually something you should have in your house. You're listening to Bulletproof Radio with Dave Asprey. Today's cool fact of the day is actually a really cool one. There's a new study that found there is no detectable limit to how long you can live. And it's kind of inspiring since there was a study last year that said we had an upper limit of 115 years. And my response to that study was, okay, if you're watching on YouTube, go to bulletproof.com slash YouTube. I actually just flipped off the camera for the second time in 450 episodes of Bulletproof Radio. Because seriously, you're going to tell me that there's a limit, so then I'll stop looking for ways to break it? Like, that's not cool. Like, be nice. All right, so anyway, this new study, which was published in Nature by McGill University, and the biologist stated, quote, the sky's the limit. They looked at the lifespan of the longest living people from the US, UK, France, and Japan since 1968, and they found no evidence for a limit of 115. And they said, if a maximum exists, it has yet to be reached or identified, which means I will be the first one to identify that upper limit, and I would invite you to join me in doing that, because wouldn't it be fun to hang out with me on my 180th birthday party? I think so, I hope to see you there, and if not, I'm gonna die trying, all right? So we're good on that. Now, before we get into into today's show, if you haven't tried Bulletproof Brain Octane Oil, you need to try it now. Here's why. Coconut oil, MCT oil, they don't work the same way. Brain Octane oil is not MCT oil. It is a very rare form of this oil that is triple distilled in the US. And what it does is it raises your ketones four times more than coconut oil. Coconut oil, it turns out, put you in fat burning mode only about as much as sleeping for eight hours, which is to say not very much. Uh, Brain Octane oil gives you a ton of energy and it actually measurably moves the amount of fat burning molecules called ketones in your blood. You can get Bulletproof Brain Octane Oil, which is a core part of the the registered trademark Bulletproof Coffee recipe, which requires grass-fed butter, Brain Octane Oil, and our special coffee beans that have no toxins in them like normal coffee. But when you use this oil, you can pour it in your food. I had it in my salad dressing. I have it three times a day in all of my meals. And the difference in clarity and hunger and cravings is just unbelievable. So give it a shot. When you try it one time, you'll feel good. When you try it every day, you'll feel amazing. You can go to Whole Foods, you can go to your favorite natural products grocer, you can go to Amazon, and best of all, go to bulletproof.com. You can subscribe, save some money, and I'll tell you, you won't want to live without it. There are tens of thousands of people who travel around the world with little bottles of it to make sure that they perform well. I had it right before I went on stage at Tony Robbins' main event a little while ago, and 
I wasn't the only one, we'll put it that way. And if you like today's episode or you just like Bulletproof in general, I would be incredibly grateful if you would take your time to do a couple things. One, you're already in iTunes. Click leave a rating and leave a five-star rating. It makes a huge difference. I look at those numbers every single day. And if you liked Headstrong, my new book, they hit the New York Times science bestseller list. If you went to Amazon right now and you left a five-star review and just told people in two sentences what you think about it, I would be eternally grateful. Reviews help other people find the book and it helps them find all these life-changing things that are in there and the reviews have been incredibly positive. So if you've already done it, thank you. If you're about to do it because you love this episode, thank you even more. Today's guest is a good friend and she's Cynthia Pasquella Garcia, celebrity nutritionist, media personality, and best-selling author of a book called The Hungry Hottie Cookbook and The Pink Method. And she's sold over a million copies of her books internationally. And she's the founder and director of the Institute for Transformational Nutrition. And she's personally coached more than, get this, 400,000 clients around the world through one-on-one and group coaching programs over the last 20 years. You've probably seen her in Access Hollywood, uh, Harper's Bazaar, The View, Fitness Magazine, Vogue, Shape Magazine, Marie Claire, and a bunch of other things like that. And you might see her on... Chloe Kardashian's new show, whose name I actually forgot. Cynthia, what's the name of that new show? Yes. Thank you. I was like, it's some kind of body. It was like angry body, some sort of revenge revenge body. body. And what's your role on the show? You're the the official uh, nutritionist. That's right. We just wrapped up season two, um, where, by the way, all the uh, the, um, cast members were using Bulletproof products. So, yeah, no, it's true. Um, Everyone on the show, and then even the production team and the people behind the scenes as well, big fans. Oh, wow. Well, I, I imagine that has something to do with the fact that you were there. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I knew that you'd like got a few extra bottles. But I didn't know you were spreading the love like that. that love. That's really cool. Uh, today, we are going to talk about something really interesting for people listening, which is your path. And you've been on the show before, yeah. but it was a while back. And it, it's your path around discovering and figuring out what transformational nutrition is, uh, because you've spent the last couple of years like just readjusting everything you do around this new concept. I think it's it's actually really exciting. And so for people listening, they'll be able to learn what it is and the difference between like the American Dietitian Association, which should be called the American <laughs> Diabetic Association because that's what they make you with their stupid recommendations. Come on, guys, get with the program. Anyway, I'll get <laughs> off my soapbox on there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. But you are... Uh, you're you're into this yeah. this new space and reaching a lot of people with it. So, what is transformational nutrition, and why should wow, that's a big bold it? question to kick the, kick us off? Um, well, first of all, Dave, thanks for having me here. I always love hanging out with you, and you have such an amazing audience that I just adore. So this is this is really good. It's such an honor to be here. Um, so, transformational nutrition is the new science of personalized health. So basically what we do is we combine the science of nutrition with psychology and spirituality to get to the root cause of your health issues so that you can heal them and transform not just your body, but your heart, your your spirit, your life for good. Um, We're really interested in getting permanent change. We're really interested in, you know, taking nutrition in a direction where it it hasn't ever gone before. You know, and when I say, you know, psychology and spirituality, I think most people tend to think about, you know, like emotional eating or uh, meditating. And we take it so much deeper than that, you know, through coaching all of those people that you've mentioned. I mean, I've been doing this now, you know, for over 15 years. And when I first started, I had no idea, you know, I just thought we'll tell people what to eat and they'll eat it and everything will be great. Yeah, that <laughs> didn't quite work out that way. Um, so I realized really quickly that there needed, that there was more to health and true transformation than just food. You know, food plays a role, certainly, but if that's all we're focused on, we're never going to truly get well. So I've been on this journey of developing um, this this new science of personalized health, which I call transformational nutrition. Um, and completely, as you said, you know, ITN has been around for several years now, but we've spent the last two years completely dismantling everything and creating something brand new that we're really, really proud of. So we can talk more about that but um all right Cynthia you know I love you I'm not sure I, actually <laughs> that, so. I love it what what can I answer for you about that uh, so like yeah. if someone walked up to you on the street you have the two sentence answer 
what's transformational nutrition? Like, like what's different from any other kind of nutrition? Like, what's the... What's, yeah, what's the that's a good question. It's, it's really, it's, it's kind of difficult to just say in a nutshell, but again, getting what, what basically we allow you to do and what transformational nutrition is, is we're able to take a full understanding of not just why, you know, what your health should be or could be and how to get you there, but why you got there in the first place. So let me give you an example. So I mentioned science and you think, oh, science of nutrition, you know, calories in calories out it's not quite that simple we go much more in depth so we look at things like genetics right which i know you're a big uh, fan of and highly educated in like that's so critical if you don't understand an individual's genetics how are you creating a personalized healthcare plan for them you know and and it's funny because people talk about personalized health being the future and yet no one's really doing a lot to get us there especially in the area of nutrition right like we have these uh, meal plans that are popping up based on your genetic results and and that's great but we have so much further to go. So we look at genetics, we look at the exposome, you know, everything from the microbiome to external factors to lifestyle factors, relationships, your socioeconomic status, all of these things play a huge, huge role. And then we move into, you know, looking at your health history past, you know, your family health history, all of that. So that's really what we take into account when we say the science of nutrition. When we get into psychology, we go even deeper. So we look at um, something that I'm so excited about and something that has been huge for our students and for our clients, for all of our students' clients, and that is um, trauma. You know, people think like, oh, trauma, and they think PTSD and those types of things, but we all suffer from trauma. There's, you know, incidents in, in all of our past that we have these scars from that we need to heal from. And that impacts you. You know, the body stores that information. And so if you're not getting really clear on these things that happened and helping people resolve them, then they're never really truly going to heal, right? There's some some serious psychological factors that we have to consider, um, such as this, for example, people are starting to look at, doctors and scientists are now starting to look at autoimmune disease and question like, is this a disease of self-hatred? Is this a disease of, you know, this pain manifesting physically? So it's, you are having a lot of different conversations now, and yet people aren't translating those into something, a system that you can use to address these things, right? So So that's what we talk about psychology. We also look at evolutionary psychology, your mental health environment, spirituality. We look at your personal spirituality, communal, environmental. So it's a much deeper, deeper dive. Is that too in-depth for you? (laughs) Is that helpful? Uh, No, that that made a lot of sense. And and so I I just want people listening to understand that the part you said about trauma is probably the most important. But I'm guessing 80% of people listening to this are like, okay, you know, I, I'm however old I am. I'm functioning yeah. pretty well in my life. Uh, you know, I, I I wasn't you know held up at gunpoint. You know, I didn't have parents who beat me. Uh, you know, nothing bad happened when I was sure. when I was young. So yeah. therefore, I have no trauma, and therefore, it has nothing to do with my behaviors, and therefore, it has nothing to do with what I eat or or any of the other things in my life that I don't like. What do you? If say you were born, that? you have trauma. You are. It's true. When your birth is a very traumatic experience, you know, it's none of us come into this world just easily. And, you know, it's it's a very traumatic experience. And study after study has shown this. You know, I'm not alone in in saying this. So if you were born and it's a guarantee that you have trauma, none of us. And, and, and when we say trauma, by the way, I think, again, people think trauma is this big thing. Right. But you can really look at it as a past pain, like something that's happened to you. Have you ever broken up with someone ended a relationship? Have you ever lost someone that you cared about? Were you ever embarrassed in front of uh, people, a group of people or, or someone that meant something to you? There's a lot of different pain and past pain that's actually trauma that, you know, we tend to we tend to think, well, I'm not going to let that affect me. Right. It's, this isn't something that's going to be top of mind for me. I'm just going to not talk about it. I'm just going to sort of push it down. and I'm going to move forward. And we trick ourselves into thinking that that's really what's happening. But it isn't. This continues to affect us, even though it, we aren't always conscious of it. it it's funny that you went straight mm-hmm. to birth. We we're talking about this. By the way, it, you're listening to this, you're going, oh, these guys are talking about birth. And I thought I was going to hear about <laughs> nutrition, but this 100%. totally sticks together. Uh, so when, when you're you're born, you're floating in this nice, warm place. And you know you have a mom who's kind of all around you. And all of a sudden, you're like, there's no room in here. And then like somebody's trying to <laughs> smush me. And then you come out and there's all these bright lights and people are 
especially if you're born in the modern where there's beeping lights and people totally. sticking you with, with needles to see if you have like blood clotting and like just all sorts of crazy stuff. And you're like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. I'm scared. And there you go. It wasn't like trauma, like, you know, you were cut open. Like I used to think, you know, trauma was a TV show and it was all about the emergency room. No, all we're talking about is something scary happened that left yeah. an imprint on your on the patterns you recognize. And I, I know when I was born, I had mm. the cord wrapped around my neck. And so I, I came into the world kind of thinking there's something trying to kill me. And I, I had no clue that this had any impact on me. Mm-hmm. I didn't lose oxygen. And I ended up doing some transpersonal work uh, called yeah. holotropic breathing. And it turns out in a little while, probably after we air the show, we'll have just completed a bulletproof uh, workshop with Stan Groff, the guy who invented holotropic breathing, like the father of this whole school of psychology. Uh, we're doing this for a couple hundred people in San Francisco. And y- you can actually go back and like re-experience mm-hmm. the emotions of something like this. And Stan Groff, after treating 10,000 people with LSD in the old Czechoslovakia before the curtain fell. Uh, He did this in a psychiatrist's office with profound healing. So this wasn't about getting people high at all. It was about just getting in touch with old feelings Mm -hmm. so we could help them work through it. And now that's all been replaced by just breathing deeply uh, and using some special exercises. But what he found is that there's five stages of birth. And if you get stuck emotionally or spiritually at one of these stages, you keep acting it out really through the rest of your life. And that most of the behavior patterns, not most, many of the behavior patterns people had at their core actually had to do with how they came into the world. And I can tell you, I'm sitting here in front of you, Cynthia, uh, and I'm on the air like this because I went back and I like reset all those patterns. Because if I hadn't done that, I, I had this message that like, no one wants to help, you're gonna be alone all the time mm-hmm. and something's trying to kill you. And like, <laughs> that's just not a good way to run a company or be a dad or, or frankly, choose yeah. what you're gonna put on your plate. And that's the kind of trauma we're talking about. It has nothing to do with well, it could, trauma. right? Like it could um, have something to do with that. I mean, a yeah, lot of people can. do experience yeah. a lot of uh, abuse, right? V- verbal abuse, physical abuse, right. sexual abuse. We do have a lot of uh, veterans, you know, who have been in combat and they have PTSD. And you don't have to be in a war, by the way, to have PTSD. Um, but but uh, there's a lot of oh, different yeah. types of trauma. And you're right. You know, your birth method, how you came in is critical. And it's critical that we look at that, you know, and not just from a perspective of trauma, but also from a perspective of of health, you know, we look at the the microbes that uh, babies who are born vaginally have versus ones that are born via C-section, right? And that's all really critical information to have. But looking at your childhood diet is really critical because a lot of this, you know, I mean, you I know um, are fully aware of epigenetics and the studies around that. Like these are really critical factors. We didn't just wake up one day as these adults and all of a sudden we have these health issues that just happen to pop up. You know, these things are rooted in our history, the history of our, you know, our existence on this on this planet. And and I think unless you're examining all of those things and if you, unless you're examining them at that super deep level, how can you really truly transform or heal or be healthy or well or live a vital life? I would argue that you couldn't not fully. That's been exactly my experience and tying it into nutrition where your body won't even process. Yeah calories and and I don't really look at food as calories but end of the day Mm -hmm. calories are energy and you got to have enough energy and so if your your body is set up to look at the world because of this past trauma this past experience that that is probably not even memorable if it's an early childhood thing like like it's it's in there in the way you react but it's not in there in the Mm -hmm. way you think your body will actually use energy differently so you eat a bite of food and you're like okay is this going to go into rebuilding the system or is this going to go into getting ready to kill? Right? And if it goes into getting ready to kill, you're going to demand mm-hmm. sugar because yes. you need more sugar quickly. And so you're going to get a craving. Like who would have thought? But this is the kind of stuff that, that you're teaching, you're focusing on. And after 15 years, you were saying of, of doing this, you've, you've arrived yeah. at this point. It, if someone listening was to sit down with, with you or one of your coaches just be like, I don't have any clue about this stuff, but you know, I, I've got you know, 25 pounds to lose and sometimes I make really crappy decisions about what I put on my plate and I kind of know it. 
Yeah, Where that's a great start? question. Um, so traditionally, before I stumbled onto all of these things and put the system together, you know, you would start at a traditional intake form. You know, what are, what are you eating? When are you eating it? How much are you eating? What's your health history? Those types of things. What we do now is we go much, much deeper. So we've created, because l- let me just give you um, a little bit of backstory to tell you why we've created this before I tell you what it is that we've created. So what sure. I was finding, um, I mean, look, Dave, we live in this uh, world and we're all, we have a lot of people are really unhealthy. And despite the advances of medicine and modern medicine, and you've played a big role in a lot of this, we aren't, we're only getting worse. You know, if you look at statistics, I mean, right now, one in every three people will develop cancer at some point in their lives. Um, Unhealthy eating and lack of movement kills 13 times more people every year than guns. For the first time ever, First time ever, we're raising a generation of children that may not outlive their parents. Clearly, this is an issue, right? And clearly, we need a bigger solution. And clearly, what we're doing isn't working. And, and you know, you're a bit of an exception to this because you've really questioned the status quo and you've questioned this, this care and, and health. And you've really looked at it from a totally different angle of biohacking, which is amazing. Most people don't do that, right? And so when people are sick and they go to the doctor, shocking, I know, um, doctors will spend 15 minutes with you after you've waited an hour to see them, and then they'll write your prescription based on your symptoms alone. They have no idea about any of the other stuff going on. You could buy a diet book, great diet books. I wrote a really good one, so did you, um, and that's great, but they still offer a cookie cutter approach, right? And you can personalize them, and and again, you do a great job with this, but it's tough, and, and we're still not getting to like those deeper reasons. Like, why do people know that they should follow the bulletproof diet, but they just won't do it. You know, we write the book, you give them the information, and then they fall off the wagon. It's tough. Cynthia, it's it's, it's just because they're bad people. Can, can we... Those evil humans. Um, yes. So, so, so diet books, right? They're a great solution. And, and then we have health coaches who, you know, they get these, this, this education, but it's tough because often the education doesn't go as in depth as what they need. And they really want to show up. They really want to serve. They really want to help, but they've got all this information and they have no idea how to put it together. So they lose confidence. They feel like a fraud because they can't get their clients results. And a lot of them leave the field, which is tragic when we need them now more mm-hmm. than ever, right? So when I started looking at all of these things and how we put them all together, I thought, you know, it's not enough just to create a new science where we look at all of these things, right? Like the trauma and like all of these things that we've been talking about. You also have to put that into a system that teaches people how to use that information, right? So what we did, and there's nothing like this that existed, so I thought, how do we get coaches confident, get them clients, and then get their clients results, right? Because if we can do that, and we can really start to transform the face of health, the face of wellness. So what we've done, back to your question of what do you do, if someone, if someone comes in and sits down, we've created this um, health assessment form, which has hundreds of data points that it takes into account in all of these areas that we've talked about. Okay, again, ranging from your cultural history, your birth, traumatic experiences, your spiritual past, like all of these. And when I say spiritual, by the way, I mean connection. I'm not talking about religion here. But we take all of these factors and then we've taken out the guesswork because we run this data through a decoder system that we've created that pinpoints exactly what's going on with your client, where the triggers are, and not only that, but puts together a protocol for them that we then show you how to personalize based on their individual needs and wants. So it's a complete system that takes out all of the guesswork of creating a personalized plan that gets tremendous results for their clients. And there's no, again, no guesswork. That's pretty <laughs> cool. Tell me about this decoder system. I'm a biohacker. <laughs> so what's what's your decoder? Yes, you got well, if attention. I told you, I, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, so so basically what we've done, and again, we've been doing this for, for years now, um, we've taken all of the um, all of the, the biggest health issues right now. So if you have digestive health, autoimmune conditions, diabetes, which you mentioned early on, cancer, you know, weight and obesity is a huge issue. And we've looked at all of the cutting edge science, and then we've uh, transferred all of that and fit it into our transformational nutrition model. It's a triangle, has three areas, and within that is all of these 
these components that we talked about earlier, ranging from genetics and exposome to trauma and spiritual history. So once we plugged it into that system, it's really cool because we can start to create based on the latest science, the latest research, what we know works in a holistic way, right? So we're not just talking about diet, we're talking about biohacking, we're talking about aromatherapy and essential oils, we're talking about, um, you know, energy medicine, um, we integrate all of those things. So we've taken the best of the best. So again, there's no guesswork. And what we've created then are only the most effective protocols for each and every health condition. And then beyond that, if you want to go deeper, we actually created um, eight specialist certifications. So one just on autoimmune, one just on diabetes, one just on digestive health. Um, and we found that that's important because what we kept seeing from coaches was and what we're seeing in, in the industry now is, you know, people are looking for specialists. They're looking for experts. You know, if I want to biohack, I'm coming to Dave Asprey. You know, I, I want that go to person. So unfortunately, there weren't any specialized certifications set up. I mean, if you needed brain surgery, you wouldn't go to your family doctor, right? Neither would we. So we created these different specialties so that you can dive deeper into these other passions and get even more information to help your clients. So yeah, so created a whole system around all of this. There are a good number of people who are listening to this who are going, all right, so Cynthia, she's doing a, a TV show with <laughs> Khloe Kardashian. She has a book called <laughs> The Hungry Hottie, which is, by the way, an, an <laughs> excellent name for a book, right? Uh, but now you're talking about spirituality, and we were supposed to talk about, about food. So first we went into trauma. <laughs> Uh, and now we're talking about spirituality. So, so if you're listening to this, you're like, yeah. okay, what's going on here? So tell me a little bit more about your definition of spirituality and why it matters. It's a for really, what really great question. Um, I would say, first of all, you know, we're talking about food and we're talking about what you put on your plate. I would argue that nourishment and it comes from a much bigger place than just what's on your plate or what foods you're eating, right? And I know you you, you feel the same. Um, for me, spirituality is about discovering what you're really hungry for, right? So, Which is, by the way, <laughs> the, the most awesome name for a podcast ever. In fact, that would be the name of your podcast. Great little way of sliding in there, but I haven't mentioned that. So so that is the name of Cynthia's podcast. Uh, what you, what are, it's, it's what yeah, you're exactly. really hungry and, for, And right? look, this all came from, yeah. I mean, if we can back up for just a second, um, this all came from yeah. my own personal journey. Dave, I had no interest in nutrition. I didn't know a protein from a carb. I didn't care about any of that. Can, can, are, are you willing to tell people <laughs> what you did for a living before you did this? So I won't tell I'll, them if I'll you don't. tell them. Uh, yes. Yeah, so my degree is actually in computer science. Uh, I guess. Holy crap. Did you guys know that? This is a seriously smart yeah, woman we're talking to right um, now. I find it fascinating. I find science and the way things work to be fascinating. So I was actually a Microsoft um, certified systems engineer. So I had my MCSE. It's so cool. <laughs> Me too. Um, and I was a network <laughs> admin. And then from there, I went into training other people how to to do engineering and, and computer science. So, so yeah, that's my geeky, nerdy background. But you know, flash forward to today and it allows me to create something really cool like this because I have that, that yeah. sort of, that's the way my mind works. But, um, but yeah, so I moved on from that and, and I was in the, the television hosting industry, the modeling industry, and I did that and I got really, really sick. And I went to all of these people to try to get help. No one could help me. And I realized that I had to essentially save myself. It got really bad. I mean, I was at the point where I had decided, I woke up, found lumps in both of my breasts when I was taking a shower and thought, I'm done. That was my rock bottom. Can't do this anymore. And I decided that I was going to take my own life. I was just done, Dave. And um, through this own, through my own really, um, I mean, you could call it a spiritual awakening. You could call it just, you know, that that Zen moment, a divine download, whatever, whatever that is for you. Um, I realized that things happen for you, not to you. And I thought, I'll fix this because I'm very type A. <laughs> um, and I just, I, I like to sort of take on these these bigger things. And so I thought I'll fix this. And so when I started working with clients, um, you know, I went back to school again, got all of, you know, the, the information that I needed to learn around nutrition. And I started putting it together. I started coaching clients based on science of nutrition alone, right? 
it was fine, but people wouldn't do what I ask. <laughs> it was shocking. I know. I, and <laughs> it was, I, I was working with this client one time. Um, I've shared this story with you before, but I'll share it again briefly. Um, she came in one day and, and she, we had this little game that we would play. I would tell her what to eat. She was totally on board. She'd log everything in her food journal and she'd come back and she'd have candy bars all over it. This happened week after week after week after week. So one day she caught me in just the right mood. And I won't use her name, but I said to her, so and so, I don't get it. Like every week we go through this. Every week you know what to do. Every week you come back and you've eaten candy bars. Like at this point, you're wasting your money and my time because this isn't working. What is it? Like, please tell me what gets. Because I had no clue, Dave. I had no clue. And she did something that nobody has done to me in practice um, before or since then. And she stood up and she yelled at me. And she said, yeah, I know it's just, it's always great to get yelled at. Um, and she said, you don't understand. You know, I've been through so much in my life. I'm hugely overweight. I make jokes about being fat so someone doesn't beat me to it and make fun of me. I have to go out of my way to be nice to people because if I don't, they refer to me as the fat girl. And she said, these candy bars are the only friends I have left and I won't let you take them away from me. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah. So huh. I started to realize there was a deeper level. Right. And this is when the psychology thing popped up. And I thought, why is she doing this? So long story short, we ended up working together on that. Again, I go back to school. Right. Because I'm just a, a lifetime learner. And it was it came from this traumatic experience when she was young. Her mother was dating a man who didn't like children. So when he was coming over, the mom would buy candy bars, go to Blockbuster, rent some movies put the daughter, my client, in the room until the guy left. So this was her way of showing love and connection. So this this is an example of a traumatic event that most people wouldn't think of as being traumatic, but it certainly was. And she carried this with her throughout the entire rest of her life up until that point. So you have to look at like, why do people know what to do and they still won't do it? You have to look at evolutionary psychology. What has worked for them in the past? What hasn't worked and why? You have to look at trauma and how did that impact them? How is it continuing to impact them? And how do you release that and let go of it so that they can move forward? So I got that piece and I thought, this is great. We're going to really see some, some changes. And we did. My clients completely were able to shift. It was amazing. But I noticed that there was still just something missing. You know, people would say they wanted to do something, wanted to be happy. They wanted to live a bigger life. But again, getting them to take that, that leap. And I realized that it was a connection. It was about connection. You know, so many of us have lost connection to ourselves, uh, to each other, to the environment, to, uh, you know, a higher power, if you believe in that. And it's tough thinking that we have to go it alone. You know, those the, the, the connection in the community is critical for human beings to thrive. We know that, right? And so I thought, okay, well, how do we incorporate this? How do we discover what you're really hungry for? How do we reestablish that connection? And so that's what spirituality is for us at ITN. And that's what we teach and what we really cultivate. And when I, I saw that when you put those three things together, the science, the psychology, the spirituality, that's when the game changed. Everything shifted. People weren't just losing weight and getting healthy and getting rid of dis-ease and ailments in their body. They were getting out of relationships that didn't serve them to go find the man or woman of their dreams. They were uh, leaving jobs that they hated going to every day so that they could pursue their passions in, in the world and actually step up and, and serve their purpose. It was amazing. So that's you know a very long way about answering your question of what spirituality, but that's why it is what it is. And that's why we do it. It's why it's so, so critical. It's more than meditating. You used, uh, you oh, used the N-word earlier, nourish. nourish. <laughs> and that word is something that is actually almost entirely missing from modern yep. nutrition discussion. And when you look at what nourish means, especially the way you just, just explained it, it, it means the things that 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 fuel you, that, that you. power you. And it's not just food. Yeah, yeah the things that feed you. And the way most of us received our first nourishment was sort of usually right. attached to a breast, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so there are there are things around our association with getting en getting energy that have nothing to do 100%. with what you put on your plate, right? It, it, it's why you know taking a moment of gratitude yes. before you eat it changes yes. what the food does to you. It, it, it's one of the things that led me over the last 
you know, five years of, of Bulletproof's really rapid growth. Now, I'm a, I'm a dad and a husband, and I, I kind of have three full-time jobs, right? Or maybe four if you count being a dad and husband, where it's like, okay, and you, you, yeah. have, you have a similar life. It's like, okay, you write a, a, a substantial book every year or two. Yep. Okay, that's a full-time job, and there are people who only do that. Run a podcast, like a top podcast, that's a full-time job. And then like be a CEO and run a business is also a full-time job. So to do that, I've had to, in addition to just finding the, the patterns mm-hmm. that I have that aren't serving me, but I've also had to go through and just be like, okay, every single second of every day is what, I, is what I'm doing right now, does it actually give me energy mm-hmm. or does it take energy away? And the things that give you energy are the things that nourish you. And it's not just food that gives you energy. It, it doesn't matter how much food you have. If you're doing something that's so interesting and amazing and fun, like, okay, I'll do that. And like six hours later, oh, I yeah. forgot to eat. Exactly. Right, you don't care. Exactly. Right. And you're, and you're full of energy. Like that's the nourishing thing. And sometimes it's, you know, I just needed a hug, right? That's a nourishing exactly. act. It has nothing to do with food. But if you divide that and say, oh, that has nothing to do with, with this domain, you end up with the same thing that happens in Western yes. medical practice, right? Yep. I'm a kidney doctor. Like, yeah, but uh, what about the liver doctor over there? Like, do you guys ever <laughs> talk? And what about the heart doctor? And, exactly. Or American Heart Association. Like, oh, we don't worry about cancer and diabetes. Those are other guys. So we'll give you recommendations yeah. that cause those things yeah. because we just don't care. Yep. And it, they don't care. It doesn't it's, it's work that way, universe. though. And you know this. You know, it's we, we can't separate things. We are not, you know, beings. We're not machines that just have these little things that you can take out and replace. We might be if you plan on living to 150 or however long you plan on living. We might get to that point. But right now we're <laughs> not, you know. And, and everything is so interconnected. And I don't mean just within our body. I mean within our world, right, within the environment that we live in, the lives that we live, the, the friendships, the connections, the relationships that we have. By the way, you want to ask, uh, get a really quick um, peek at how someone's health is, ask them how their relationships are. It's direct correlation every single time. So it's it's interesting. And, you know, unless you're really taking a, essentially a whole life approach, like I hear people talking about taking these whole body approaches, and I think that's wonderful, but we need to take a whole life approach to, to looking at health and vitality and optimal wellness, whatever that is, you know, um, but it's true. It's that we can't just single these things out. And here's the thing, Dave, you know, when you start to really look at nutrition and nourishment from a life point of view, not lifestyle, I'm not talking about your habits or that stuff, but I'm talking about your entire life, then what you do is you create a way for people to truly heal, to truly feel that energy that you keep talking about, to truly step up and step out into their purpose. So it doesn't matter if you're, you know, you you get this education, you do it as a coach, or if you, if you're an accountant, you're going to be the best in your game. You're going to up level everyone around you. I mean, people talk about changing the world. This is changing the world, change the way people act, change the way they feel in the world. That will show shift things dramatically. So it's 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 so critical and it's so important. And I'm just I'm so passionate about getting this out and about, you know, looking at it from a bigger picture. Um, so yeah, I get excited. All right. You've said this word like probably 10 times. Healing. Healing. Yeah. Right. Now this is this is going to appeal to someone mm-hmm. who's wounded. Right. Now what percentage of people listening to the show right now do you think are wounded? 100%. What percentage of people listening to the show right now do you think acknowledge that they're wounded? Oh, that's a great question. Much smaller. Much smaller. So what does wounded actually mean? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think you have to look at that from, again, from a whole life perspective, right? I mean, you could you could look at wounded as as trauma, right? As feeling that pain. You could look at, at uh, being wounded as um, what stems from a disease or some sort of health condition. You could look at uh, wounded from, a, a, again, the spiritual aspect, right? And losing that connection to others around you or to something greater. You know, someone loses their faith. That's a big wound. And, and I don't you know, you can't really argue that. So again, looking at it from these three perspectives and the bigger life view, it's it's so individual. It's such a personal thing. And that's why, you know, personalized nutrition is so important. It's, it's It means different things to everyone. So to answer like, how do you fix the wounds that people heal? Well, it depends on the person and it depends on the wound, right? So you have to really take that approach. So a, a sign that you are wounded is that if you're feeling pain, 
Is it a hundred percent true all the time? Um, I would say yes, but not the truth. It's, it's tricky because you say pain and it's not like, oh, right. my arm hurts, my arm hurts. You know, I have had a lot of overweight clients that were in so much pain every single day, right. you know, uh, not physically, but emotionally, you know, their their heart is in pain. The thing, though, that we do and we've become really good at this. I mean, I was probably one of the world's best is we numb it. Right. And we numb it with food or sex or meaningless relationships or gambling or drinking. I mean, the list goes on and on you can do and all on. of the above or you all of the above. Stack those. Some, <laughs> some people just really go for it and do them all. That's true. Um, so, you know, we, we, we've become masters at this because, you know, at our core and this pull, plays into the trauma that we've been talking about, we're survivors. We will survive, you know, when backed into a corner, you'll fight your way out. There's you're, you're just going to. And when we encounter this pain of different types, we try to numb it. No one wants to hurt. No one wants to feel that. Right. So we tune out. We, we just say, oh, I'm not going to let this affect me. And I am just going to forget about it. I'm just going to act like it didn't happen. And we think we can do that. But here's what happens when we try to numb the pain and we drowned out that emotion. Do you know that studies show that you can't that, that, that you can't um, uh, separate feelings and emotions and you can't pick and choose things that you're not going to feel if you're not feeling one thing, you're not feeling the other things either. So now we've all numbed out in, in one way or another um, from all of this pain and trauma and just uh, situations and circumstances of our lives. And now we're not feeling anything. Right. So we're not feeling the joy either. We're not feeling that connection to people either, which, again, is where the spirituality really comes into play. So it's it's really critical that we that we address those things. Right. Um, otherwise, we'll have what we have now, which are people who are really sick, unhappy, uncomfortable. I mean, we keep writing all these books on how to be happy and all that. But it's, it's more than that. It's bigger than that. It's deeper than that. So if it's deeper than that. All right. I mean, if, if I was listening to this right now and I hadn't been through uh, my path, which has actually some similarities to yours, mm -hmm. we're seeing this now. How would you take someone who's like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of doing OK. You know, I'm 25 pounds overweight. My relationship's OK. Uh, you know, I, I have these things that bother me and I, I wish I did more and all the things like that. But it, it's like, you know, I'm not I didn't hit rock bottom. It, it's actually easy. When you like, like, you're like, I want to take my own life. I, I didn't get to that point, but I'm like, you know, I was in a bad marriage. Like, you know, I'm overweight. Nothing seems to work right. Like, you know, just, just kind of feeling like, like, I don't know what else to do. Yeah. It, that will cause an awakening in people. Either like, you, yeah. you're like, okay, I'm done, or I'm going to, I just have to change because there is no choice. Yeah. But what do you say to the people who are listening who are like, I'm doing pretty good? I just want to do better. Yeah. What is the transformational nutrition perspective for them? Like, do, do they have to hit rock bottom or is there a way to like intervene and be like, yeah, you're doing pretty good, but here's the next level up. Yeah, I think that's such a great question. So the, the biggest thing that our coaches do is they're educators. That's what we train them to do, right? They don't tell you what to do. Even the protocols, you co-create those, right? Because I found that if people don't have a, a, some say-so, they don't have some buy-in, they're not going to do it, right? We, we like to be in control as adult humans. We don't like to be told what to do and and that's why you know people I get asked all the time why don't diets work well I would argue that most of them do you know there's a lot of really great ways of eating that would constitute a diet but why don't people follow them I think is is the question why do we fall off the wagon and um, I think a lot of that has to do with being able to be in control because this is another way by the way of, of numbing so that we don't have to feel that pain we also then control everything because if we can control things then we're safe and we don't have to worry about dealing with any more of those pains, right? So so all of these are, are part of the bigger picture. So I feel like, um, you know, you're taking that, um, that, that control, if you will, and when you take that away from people and they don't have it, they'll stick to that diet for, you know, 13 minutes. And then they're like, oh, what do you mean? I can't have a piece of pizza. I can do whatever I want, you know, and, and then they're, they're off and, and running. But um, to answer your question, I think that the most critical thing is – meeting people where they are and educating them. So you come in, you know, you're feeling pretty good. There's nothing crazy you want to change or nothing radical. Great. What are your goals? One of the things that we really teach at ITN is listening to the, the client. You know, 
uh, look, I'm an expert on a lot of things. So are you. I, people in your audience are experts on a lot of things. But the only person that's an expert on every individual client is that client. You are the expert on you, right? So if, if you come in and you're doing pretty well and this is all you're looking for, perfect. We meet you where you are and then we can show you from there where you can go, right? So it's a very, again, a very personalized thing. The other thing about hitting rock bottom, which you mentioned, I think is, is such a great topic. And I'll say that in order to be helped, in order to be served, you have to be willing to receive that. You have to be ready in general for that transformation. And people aren't always, Dave. They will hear or think, you know, because of society or because of the media, that they need to be a certain size. They need to lose some weight. They don't want to lose weight. They don't want to go on this diet. They just think they should because society tells them they should, right? Which again, only leads to them not being successful because it's not what they want. So you have to make sure that people are ready because you can't work harder on someone than they're willing to work on themselves. And if they don't wanna change, great. You can support them being exactly where they are until they are ready. I think that's really critical. I think we take a lot of people who aren't ready or willing and we try to force them to do something and it never works. And it's never going to until they're ready. And them being ready doesn't, I mean, your rock bottom may be very different from, from mine, but you don't have to have a rock bottom situation that's as extreme as what you or I had. It could just be like, I have a friend, um, who was an attorney and, you know, in his early forties came home, he'd been an athlete when he was younger and, and very active and had just fallen into the, the, the typical American lifestyle and came home one night really late and got to the top of the stairs and was out of breath. And that was it. He was like, I'm, I'm 40 years old, you know, and I can't walk upstairs without being out of breath. And that was his tipping point. That was the trigger for him. That was rock bottom. Right. So there's always these things that happen um, and the severity of them, you know, can fluctuate. But only, you know, when you're ready and that'll be different for everyone. All right. We're coming up on the end of the show. And you've already asked the top three recommend, uh, you've already answered the top three things you do to someone who wants to do everything in yeah. life better. Yeah. So I want to ask you a different, a different question mm -hmm. that ties in with what you do at the Institute for Transformational Nutrition. And I just made this up, so I plan this ahead of time. <laughs> oh, this should be good. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite color? No. Um, <laughs> it's, it's more this. So you've done a lot of work on yourself and you've worked with just countless clients. And do you feel like you've cracked the code on understanding what your life's purpose is or helping clients do that? And like, how does that tie into transformation? Like, like, how do you find your life's purpose? Yeah, you know, gosh, that's such a big question. And um, I used to think, Dave, when I was going through this really trying period, um, that I would just go be enlightened. This is my plan. I'm not even joking. I, I heard about <laughs> spirituality. I'm not kidding. And I thought, well, that'll change everything. If I'm as enlightened as Ram Dass, I'll just, I'll be great. There'll be no more problems. I'll have, you know, my stuff together. So I thought, I'm just going to go get enlightened. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get enlightened. And then I'll, I'll be able to sit back and just enjoy the rest of my life. Right. And um, clearly that didn't happen because that's ridiculous. Right. So I think that, um, it really, I mean, your life's purpose, is there just one, do you only have one purpose and it never changes? Do you have multiple and at different points in your lives, they're different, right? Um, like for example, my purpose in a lot of ways, and I know that this is why I'm here is to help people overcome trauma and transform their lives into creating that power, right? So it's really taking pain, turning it into power. I know that that's, that's one of the reasons I'm here. Um, and I know it's why I've been through all the things in my life that I've been through. You know, I grew up in extreme poverty, really poor, was sexually abused, emotionally abused, had a really, really difficult time. We went hungry as a kid. There was no running water in our house, constant challenges and, and struggles. But I know that those things happened for me not to me. And I know very clearly that my purpose is to teach others how I've how I've been on this journey, like the things that I've learned on this journey so that maybe they can apply them in their own lives, you know, and, and, and I think you you really understand that. I feel like that's, you know, part of your story as well. So I think that's for sure my purpose. 
my purpose is also to be a great mother. You know, um, I mean, I have two amazing children. And when I first had my daughter, I was terrified because I didn't have a great mother growing up. It was very traumatic. I went through a lot of trauma with my mother and I was terrified that I didn't know how to be a good mom, you know? So for me, that became my purpose is to break that cycle of, you know, everything that had happened with my mother and to do things differently, to show up differently for my daughter. Right. So that's a purpose. And I I don't know that we have just just one. Um, I don't know that there's just one thing that we're supposed to do in this world. What I do think is that we're supposed to be here, uh, to quote Ram Dass, we're supposed to be here now. Um, we, I do know that if you're interested in finding your purpose, you're not going to do it eating Cheetos. Um, you know, I do know that there are a lot of different ways that you can find your purpose. For some people, it's hitting rock bottom. For some people, it's, you know, going through 40 years of Zen. Um, there's a lot of different Different things that can can trigger that for people, but I don't think there's one way, and I don't think there's one purpose. I think we would be, you know, we would miss out on a lot of things if that were our thinking. Uh, well, thanks for that answer. Maybe I'll have to ask more people that question. Cool. <laughs> that was that was an interesting question. I figured my my life's purpose is to ask people their life's purpose. There, no, I'm done. <laughs> oh, it's like my question: What are you really hungry for? Right, it's always interesting. Like bacon. Answer. Bacon. That's, that's such an easier. There you go. Bacon and butter. <laughs> now that we're at the end of the show, and that was actually really cool. Thank you for, for digging deep on that. Yeah. Uh, where can people find out more about your work and about becoming a certified coach uh, or just about, you know, decoding things? Like, like get, give me the details. <laughs> decoding things. You get a secret decoder in your in your <laughs> I have the box. Ring. <laughs> decoder ring. I know it's great. Yeah. So, so you know, again, transformational nutrition, it's, it's not just for, you know, people who want to be coaches, although we certainly... Um, provide that education and we give you coaching skills, we give you the system, we teach you to build a business. But, you know, it's really for anyone who wants to take personal responsibility for their own health, who wants to get to the root of their trauma, who really truly is looking for everything that you can do for the whole life picture on becoming healthier, more vital, finding your purpose, if you would like, but really showing up on this planet and being here and just being, you know, as lit up as you teach people um, to do at, at Bulletproof. So, um, the way you can find out more about that is we set up a course um, for you guys. It's called Discover Transformational Nutrition, and it's free. This will walk you through the exact model of transformational nutrition, what it is, why it's so important, the five steps of transformational nutrition coaching so that you can use that to start looking at the root causes and digging into some of these traumatic things and the spiritual side of things and all the all the other topics that we've talked about um, and, and really learn and apply that to your own life. It's Again, it's totally free. Um, you can just go to transformationalnutrition.com slash free course, and we'll have it set up there for you. So you can dig in, get lots more information. And then once you get to our website, you'll see our social media and our blog and all of that great information as well. Awesome. Yeah. So if you're listening, this stuff appeals to you, check it out. I've known Cynthia for, geez, a long time now, like, like <laughs> five, five or six years. And she, she walks the talk and has really spent the last two years honing in on this, you know, it's not about what's on your plate. It's about the hidden factors there. So if, if this conversation, we went in lots of cool directions, there, <laughs> if that appeals to you, you should check it out. It, it's good stuff. Thank you, Dave. Now, if you enjoyed today's episode, you know what to do. Uh, head on over to bulletproof.com and pick up some brain octane oil or read Headstrong if you haven't done it yet. I mean, it's a New York Times bestselling science book, for God's sake. (laughs) Is there a better endorsement, by the way? I'm still blown away by that. So I just keep saying it over and over, (laughs) and hopefully you you won't stop listening or something because I said it one more time. Anyway, but so go over there and do something good, or better yet, you can do what Cynthia talked about, and you can do something that I, I believe very much in, which is to connect with other people. Like, do something nice. Yeah. That's all you got to do. And if you like the show, do something nice. That's a great way of saying thanks. So thank you for listening, and I look forward to being with you on the next episode.